Warning, some contents may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. I was on a plane once and noticed that although people were still boarding, there was a large number of seats around me and occupied. The last people on though were all together and consisted of one large family traveling together. There were four adults and about ten children ranging from toddler age to high school or young adult. They have the usual look of a large group traveling with children, some of whom were shy and withdrawn, and others who were running around and the adults looking frazzled, trying to keep everyone and everything together. When they have all been seated, there seemed to be some issue with the seating, as one member of their party was supposed to sit several rows back. The flight attendant apologized and said that it happens, that sometimes their computer will shuffle sequential seating and etc., but assured them that there was seating available for everyone. The family sat down, minus one, and starting with the usual. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Wish they could sit up here. Since it seemed that their party was surrounding me, I stopped the flight attendant and asked her if I could switch seats with another passenger. This caught the attention of the large group, perhaps anticipating a complaint. But the flight attendant told me no, they don't usually do that and that everyone has been seated. But asked if there was a problem with where I was sitting. I explained to her that I was traveling solo and I didn't care where I sat and asked if I could give my seat to the member of the family who was absent as my seat would have put them in the midst of their group. The family overheard and was thanking me, and as I retrieved my bag overhead and followed the flight attendant to the family member's seat, she explained what was happening, and I noticed that the family member, a young girl maybe 12 years old, seemed in a hurry to get back to her family and thank me four times. She practically ran up the aisle and before I could sit down, the man who'd been sitting next to her was literally staring with his mouth open and asked, What's the problem? No, that girl was sitting here first. That was red flag number one. The flight attendant explained to him what was happening and he immediately looked at me and said, No, I don't want to sit next to him. Where's that girl going? And she explained to him that there was no issue and there is nothing she could do now. I think she was getting the same vibe. Now, I want to assure everyone that I'm not in the habit of judging people by their appearance. But this guy was the definition of red flags. He was overweight and paunchy. That overweight with no muscle tone look some people have. He was half bald with a few strands combed over, thick glasses and no chin. He was a mouth breather and kept his mouth open constantly, drooling on himself then sucking it back in between heavy breathing. If there was a textbook example of a creep, it would be him. And as I was putting my bag overhead, he started talking to himself under his breath about how this was bullshit and just my luck, wasn't bothering anybody and why did they move that girl? I wanted to say something to him, but I didn't. It wasn't long before my neighbor got a call and was talking about an upcoming court appearance, and I overheard, no victim's testimony, and rarely show up, and people wouldn't ask me to babysit if I was like that. The only time that I said almost anything to him was when he started blatantly watching porn on his laptop with earphones in grunting, sweating, wheezing, and kept repeating, little bitch, when a part was on he evidently liked. Then, he took a blanket and covered his lap, his hands fidgeting underneath it, and as soon as I saw he intended on keeping them there, I pretended to reach for the call button. Then he jerked his hands out and started muttering under his breath about me minding my own business. At some point, I got up to use the restroom and when I returned, he was on the phone again. 
and I caught something about the ass on her. No, switch seats on me and got away. <laughs> and he shut up as he saw me approaching. The creep went to sleep eventually and fortunately stayed asleep for the rest of the flight. When we were all deboarding, a woman I presume was the mother was standing with a girl and said, Thank you, again. And I shudder to think how he acted in the short time that she was next to him, or how he would have had she remained there. Shocking absolutely no one, including himself, he was met at the gate by security and police, and as he was being led away, he said, This isn't my laptop, by the way. I had recently moved in with my erstwhile boyfriend. He had no washer and dryer, so one weekend morning, I drove over to use the local laundromat. It was the one my boyfriend used, but I had never been there before. Not in the worst part of town, but not in the safest part of the city either. There were a number of people there, probably because it was the weekend, and I didn't notice a man standing at the doorway. I'll call him Door Guy. Door Guy didn't have any laundry, soap, baskets, wasn't with anyone in the laundromat, and didn't enter the building. I figured he must be waiting for someone because he was there a long time. I was folding my now dry clothes and probably appeared completely preoccupied with the task. My purse was on the folding table and within arm's reach. I happened to catch in my peripheral vision door guy walking into the laundromat, and without looking directly at him, I casually reached over, grabbed my purse, and put it strap over my shoulder. Door guy puts his hands up, immediately spun around, went back out to the street, and didn't hang around at the door anymore. I figured that I had just thwarted his purse snatching attempt. And when I got back to my boyfriend's place, I told him what happened. I asked him if he thought Thor guy was trying to steal my purse. He replied, I don't know. I would have had to have seen it. Needless to say, that relationship didn't last, which was actually a good thing. So, failed laundromat purse thief, let's not meet again. So I live in a different country from my family, and because of COVID, they were all in their respective homes over Christmas. And as a result, opening gifts took all day because everyone is in a different house and in a different time zone. It's fine, but opening Christmas gifts does not go on all day some years. So this year, I finally get to open my last gift at about 9 p.m. my time, I was online with my sister, who was seven hours behind me, and then I realized that I had one gift left that had no name on the tag. It had come from Amazon weeks earlier and was in one of their gift bags. My sister assured me that it wasn't her, so I opened it with her on the line. It's a set of knives. I had this on my wish list, so it was a nice surprise, but I still had no idea who it came from. As I was hanging up with my sister, my other sister started FaceTiming her, so I asked her to check whether she'd sent the gift, but we'd missed it in the chaos. My other sister has four kids, so it's bedlam when we open gifts together at her house. Sister B then confirms to Sister A that no, she didn't send them. So, that's both my sisters confirming that they didn't send them, and I believe both of them no question. I know that my brother is at my parents' house, so I messaged them to double check, but neither he nor my parents sent them. This basically leaves my significant other and a friend here in UK and a friend in Canada. 
Because of COVID, we all agreed to have a gift-free Christmas this year. There's really only these three left, and no one else knows about my Amazon wish list. As in, you'd have to search for it if you weren't one of the ones who subscribes to it, if you follow. My significant other says no that he didn't order them, but confesses that he did buy me a small gift that we will swap once he finishes isolating from visiting his family. My friend in UK says that it wasn't her, even though that's exactly the kind of prank she'd pull, seeing as we're true crime junkies. But she's pissed that she didn't think of it herself. She would without question tell me it was her if she knew that I was concerned though, and also promised me that she didn't do it. My friend in Canada says it wasn't her because she didn't know about my wish list and then asked for the link. She actually went in and did buy some bits from it for me after Christmas. So I turned back to the gift. I checked when it was sent, the first week of December. I asked Amazon if they can tell me who sent it so I can thank them. And as expected, under data protection laws, they can't tell me who sent them. I rechecked the tag and realized that it's been overridden. This is the bit that is a little creepy or sinister. The default Amazon gift card greeting is the quite jovial, enjoy your gift, but this tag had been overridden into all caps and a not so jolly, enjoy your gift, which is slightly more menacing considering that this is a knife block and a set of five kitchen knives. So basically, I got a set of knives with a slightly but definitely menacing message from someone who must know me. It can't be an accident. It would take going into my wish list, selecting the gift, ticking for gift wrap, changing the text, reviewing the order, placing the order and then paying. So there's no way that this is accidental. So the only person I can think of is a person with whom I was friends with for over a decade. She became quite anti-vax and very abrasive, and I called her on it. She didn't take it well, and we effectively ended the friendship about a week before the knives were sent. She knew I had the wish list, and money isn't a huge issue to her, so spending 40 euros for a knife block wouldn't be problematic. I don't want to ask her as the last two times we spoke, she tried to get me to argue for two days and I have no interest in her kindling that fire. So, I just want to get a little feedback really. I know it's not my family or the earlier three friends. They aren't the kind to hold out on a joke if they know it's disturbing me a bit. This other ex-friend, well, it seems odd to pay good money for something that I clearly want, but not take credit. But then, I guess she has the out that if I ask whether she sent them, she can always say, Oh, I might not have filled in the gift card. Even though it's clearly been overridden. So it's entirely possible that she crept into my wish list as she's bought from it before and has access and picked the knives as a sort of, you'll need more knives, all your old ones are in my back, type of idea. If it is her, it doesn't have a nice meaning behind it is what I'm saying. It's not like it's a fluffy cushion or some slippers. It's an anonymously sent knife block with a slightly menacing gift tag, and I'm finding it creepy. And I would like to know your thoughts about this. Everyone knows what doing laundry is like. Monotonous work while your brain tries to waste away the minutes that it takes for the machine to finish its cycle. Occasionally, having stiff conversations and passing with the strangers. And this night was no different. Well... At first, as I pulled my laundry out of the dryer and began to fold it on a little table, I heard a voice over the lull of my headphones. 
Excuse me, are you using this? The voice came from a man in his late 40s to early 50s. He wore glasses that reminded me of my grandfather. He was wearing a stained disposable face mask. It hung under his nose and just above his mouth. I could see the start of a dirty blonde mustache poking out. He was gesturing to an empty cart next to the table. And I simply said, No, I'm good. I have one already. And he took it and began loading his laundry and folding it on the table adjacent from mine. Now started the usual routine questions that all only older men seek to ask. What's your name? I tell him my nickname. He answers, Ah, that's beautiful. So, how old are you? 22. Do you live around here? Not really, the town over. Which was a lie. Did you go to college? What did you study? Yes, um, culinary arts management. Oh, so you like to cook? Yes. I try to keep the conversation short but lighthearted, and as it continued with some short remarks about the wonders of doing laundry, he asked the dreaded questions. Where do you work? Do you live by yourself? I hesitated on the questions momentarily, trying to keep my privacy intact without provocation. Oh, you wouldn't know it. It's a small mom-and-pop restaurant. And no, I don't live alone. Which was also a lie. He stopped folding his laundry as I just started to load mine into my hamper. He walked over to my table and leaned against the washer so that he was in my eyesight. His eyes squinted slightly as he pulled his mask under his chin and covering his face. He then awkwardly called out. So, do you want to go to the movies with me sometime, cutie? My eyebrows knitted together softly as a wave of different emotions flooded my brain. Confusion as to why he would even ask. I didn't even know his name. Embarrassment as he's easily my father's age and I am not into that. Shock, because this man doesn't even know what my face looks like. And anxiety, because I have to reject him. I was so thankful for my mask, because I'm sure my expression was not the one he would have liked to see. I softly shook my head and he copied my actions in tandem. I fumbled out a soft, No, I'm sorry, I have a boyfriend. I studied his face as I watched his brain process my response. He knitted his eyebrows together and curled his lip. I could see stains on his teeth, and he replied in an eerily soft tone, like how you calm a fussy baby. Oh, no? You don't want to go to the movies? You have a boyfriend. Okay. He nodded his head with his last word. His eyes widened slightly as they fixated on mine. His voice grew suddenly cold. It's okay. You don't have to lie to me. It's okay. You don't have to lie to me. Enunciating the don'ts with tinges of anger, annoyance filled me at his accusation. I'm not lying. We've been together for a year and a half and I love him. His eyes softened as if he just now realized the two other people in the laundromat. He slinked away returning to his laundry long abandoned. I look at him as I pulled my hamper into my arms and uttered a small, Have a nice day. And I haven't been back to that specific laundromat and I don't do laundry alone anymore. I was a year two nursing student from College East in 2006. I was attached to SGH for my IA 
as it was part of my module to pass my course. It happened in Block 4, Level 3. I was attached to the ward there. Those who are nurses should know where I'm talking about. I have to spend two months there in that ward, as I was in my three-week, and I was serving a patient. His kidney was on a second stage of renal failure, so which means that he is not too far from third stage, which will cause him to die. As I spend a week serving him, I got to know about his family and his life. He was quite a friendly uncle, which often helped him pass my time faster through my shifts in my attachment, so I kind of spend more time with him talking than the other patients. After spending a good two weeks serving him, he has really become a friend. Then, on a Friday afternoon, when it was the end of my shift, I bid my farewell to him and that I'll see him on Monday as a healthier man. Monday came and I came in as usual. It was 7.15am and I was alone sitting at the counter waiting for the change of shift. I saw my favorite uncle walking to pass the counter to the toilet. I called out to him saying, Hey, uncle, you can walk already. That's good, that's good. Slowly walk, okay? Or you want me to help you? He replied calmly, It's okay, boy. I'm good, I'm good. You've been a great help already. You got work to do, right? Go, go, go. Then he continued to walk on. As he turned into the corner before to enter the gents, he turned around and said, Really, boy, thank you so much. As a nurse, you get these things kind of a lot, so I just went on doing my stuff. And as the shift changed and the passing of reports came, the report of my uncle was not mentioned in the daily report, so I questioned about his status. All the staff nurses were confused. Why are you asking about him? Then I said that I just saw him walking to the toilet just now. All the staff were shocked. Then one of the senior staff pulled me aside to ask me to stop talking. Then, she told me that he had died yesterday due to a sudden worse renal failure which the doctors couldn't save. I did not believe it at first. I ran to check his former bed and none of his stuff were there. Then I ran to check the toilet and no one was inside at all. I couldn't believe it, but after a while, I accepted his death and I went to read his case notes. He was pronounced dead the same time as I saw him on that very day, 7.15 a.m. This isn't my own experience this time, but I was around for it and I should preface that my partner is a teacher as it's relevant later on. Sometime last year, as my partner was heading home from work, she's Japanese herself, she noticed a South Asian man seemed to be following her back to the station. This was several trains from home and a total of around 20 stops away. She got on the train, came all the way home, and he got off at the same stop as her. He sort of shuffled in panic when he saw me, and he kept walking. As tempted as I was to challenge him, it all seemed quite circumstantial, and foreigners already get a bad reputation here. So, I decided to let it slide rather than pick a potentially violent fight over possibly nothing. Fast forward maybe 8 months later, and one of her students came back to the classroom visibly shaken. The school was the same one the creep had previously begun following my partner from, and it seems the girl had been asked by a South Asian man to share her social networking info with him. The girl was 13, and my partner is also very petite for her age, and could be mistaken as a high schooler or middle schooler 
by someone looking out for them. At that point, alarms started ringing, so of course, she informed security, but has heard nothing since. It's scary to imagine that these people are so blatantly out there, in well-lit, populated public places, brazenly taking risk in a place that should otherwise be a safe space. So everything started about seven months ago in December of 2021. It was one of my first nights being home alone, and I had been home alone hundreds of times for the day, but this was one of the first through the night. I was playing games on my computer when I heard my dog start barking hysterically. My dog is not one to just bark at nothing, especially not in the house, so I knew something was up and went to check on her and she was alerting to something down the hallway to the front door. She started growling. Then I heard the lock on the front door rocking back and forth. I immediately thought that someone was trying to break in, and the lock was rattling for about 20 seconds before it stopped. Then a few seconds later, I heard three thumping, creaking footsteps above my upstairs. This freaked me the hell out, so I checked every room upstairs and then checked the camera outside, and there was nothing. There is a glass storm door on the outside of the front door, so whatever was moving the lock was from the inside of the house. That was it for a few months, so I kind of forgot about it until my dad started asking if me or my mom were walking around upstairs in the middle of the night. Neither of us were up, and my dad said that he kept hearing footsteps and faint talking for four days before it stopped. And a few nights ago, I was up at around 2 a.m. when my parents were asleep, and I could have sworn that I saw someone about eight foot tall standing in the pitch black living room. We have also noticed over the past months that small things like soap bars, screwdrivers, and yarn would go missing for a few weeks and turn up somewhere completely different and out of place. The first event in December was about a month after my grandfather passed, so I like to think that this is him giving us signs. But every time something happens, it feels like my heart stops, like something isn't just messing with us for fun. It's a very weird sensation, and any insight would be helpful. And here are the top comments for my last video. And here's the riddle for this video. I am a plant seen at Christmas which people hang above, and then they stand beneath me and kiss someone they love. What am I? Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.